All right. So today, for most of you guys, we are starting the diffuser build. Though I've already started the mock-up process yesterday. I forgot to uh, record because I was in a hurry. So, here's our trusty gauge. What are we looking at here? 0 0.1 degree. So, here's the diffuser setup. Now, I posted this yesterday and a lot of people got hurt because it's clearly too big and they don't understand or probably didn't listen to my commentary on the video that I always start big because it's easier to cut items out than glue them back in. Um, so those guys have their own issues, but this is obviously bigger than it should be. It's bigger than the Cayman diffuser, but we're gonna cut it down and fine tune the, uh, the shape. The next thing I'm checking here is the angle. I want this to be maximum. <laughs> Sorry, if you guys can't see this, I'm taking off my head. All right, so rule of thumb for building diffusers, you want them between five to seven degrees max attack. Because if you go more than that, you're basically ruining the efficiency of your diffuser. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna place this on here and see what kind of angle we're on. Okay. I think this thing is pretty accurate, right? I think. Got this at Home Depot. So 0.5, I'm just gonna add 0.5 to everything or minus 0.5 to everything. So obviously this is a lot more than what we need, which is totally fine because I'm just gonna cut this down anyways. I just move the tape down to adjust the uh, angle. The final product, I'm actually gonna have a, uh, a bracket inside that's adjustable. And that way I could just pivot it depending on the shape that I end up with. So let's double check, make sure that this is actually accurate. Because that didn't look right at all. Yeah, it's about right. 18.4 degrees. So we need to lower it, obviously. Or we just lift from the back. Might be a good idea. First thing we need to do is we need to measure how much to go in. Because my new tires will actually hit this because they're a lot wider. These are 245s. I'm going to be blocking 285s. So I need to make sure I have enough room for those bad boys. So I think I'm gonna cut off around four inches. So four inches in and four inches on the other side. So we're gonna get shorter to about right here. For me, it's probably easier to do this if I just copy this line. So I'm gonna take off some from here. There you go. Then I can paste it on here and just copy the shape. I think that makes sense. If it doesn't, then we're in trouble, but I think this makes sense. So we can just Put this up here, make sure that it's perfectly straight on the edge. Okay. And we'll just get a little piss. Stick the tape right there. Okay. Now from there, we go to this side. We're essentially using the cut piece that I trimmed off as a template. That should be fairly accurate. 
be honest. You just get your pen. Don't push too hard. Just follow the, the line all the way across. Oops. Sorry for smacking you, GoPro. There you go. Then, voila, there's our four inch. And essentially, a copy of what our edge is right now. So if I go over here, stick this through. Yeah, that looks about right, I think. Where's my diffuser edge? Here's my diffuser edge. Double check the shape. Oh, definitely. So now I'll show you guys how I cut this. The easiest way to cut is with this um, X-Acto knife type or box cutter and just ever so slowly follow the line. I put my fingers here so it's stable and I could have a surface to uh, guide my blade. Oh, uh, it's probably annoying, so. You just mute the audio. Oh, yeah. So the secret is to go through it twice. The first, the first pass, you kind of just score it, right? And then the second time, you follow it up and you cut it a little deeper, but not too deep that you cut your you know, um, backdrop here. Best thing to do is actually put it on another foam board so you don't cut anything. But I wanted to show you guys that if you cut it directly on whatever surface that you're trying to cut, you're probably gonna go through it and jack up your blade. Looks like I got some weak cuts around here. Now you don't want to rush this process because this is basically your template. So if you screw this up, you're not gonna have a good cut. See that? Decent. I feel like if I were a better student in college, I could have been a surgeon. <laughs> now I'm a surgeon for diffuser parts. All right, so I'm gonna flip this guy over. Do the same thing, four inches from the edge. Okay, four inches here. So you guys could design your own diffuser too, obviously, but just make sure it's somewhat functional. All right, so we were right here. Bam! So this should be similar. Good. Okay, so now I should be able to swap this over and be exactly the same dim. Yeah, see, perfect. Poifik, my friend, poifik. Oh, if you guys are curious how I smoothly bent my foam board, easy. Get yourself a spray bottle of something and just literally push it down and massage it. See? Round. If you don't do that, a foam board actually buckles like this. See that? It's like a squarey buckle. Food for thought. Right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure this area here. 
and see how many fins we can use to um, divide our sectors. All right. So we have roughly 60 and a half inches. And how many fins do I want? So if my diffuser looks like this, right? I already have one, two fins, which are those guys. And I could add, obviously, uh, one in the middle, one there, and one there. And that could work. You could do a five element unit, or another way is we could do um, one, two, three, four, five, six. You could do that, that'd be kind of cool. Or some people even have seven, you know? One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, no, I added a little too much, but. Uh, which way shall we go, my friends? The more fins, the heavier it is, obviously. I probably do. Like a seven would be kind of cool. Yeah, take this out. And this could be a, the edge of our last. Something like this would be crazy, huh? Like a seven fin. Or we could do one, two, three, four, five, six element. Just depends on how much time I want to spend cutting up little boards. All right, so here's how we're going to make the fence. Obviously, the side ones are going to be longer because they curve. So the easiest way to make these is to, let's see, which one is the best one? This was the left hand, which I think was better, or was it? One of them was kind of funky. Where's the other one? Which one? Oh, okay, this one's the original one. This one's the better one. So what you're gonna do is obviously, see how much longer that is? I'm not sure if you guys could see that, it's the sunlight, but tip to tip, this is a bit longer. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna, well, not you, because I'm not sure what you're designing, but what I'm gonna do is mark my turn right here. Mark the edge of the other. And then, basically, just copy this line. So I know that line goes straight that way. Um, let's just make sure. Okay, good. And then I'm gonna mark the termination area, which is right there. Okay. Done. There, there. But instead of yeah, should be fine. Then we get our straight edge. Just draw a line across. You don't really need to trace the template because it's kind of inaccurate. Sorta, because it's not perfectly straight like a ruler. And these are pretty much straight edges anyway, so you could just mark those beginning and end and then use a straight edge to draw your line. If that makes sense, great. If not, um, watch it again. <laughs> so for this, we're gonna use a straight edge ruler to guide us cut. 
it's just a straight line anyways. We put a little deeper in the center. There we go. Then we need to cut this little corner right here. And just carefully follow this line. Beautiful. There is one fin that should fit somewhere over here. There you go. Bam and bam. All right. Took long enough, but here's our dividers, fins, elements, however you want to call it. Look at that, like a machine cut it. <laughs> so we got four over here, one, two, three, four, five, actually five, and then two more on this side. So next thing we're gonna do is we're going to tape these babies on. So now that we got everything taped up, we are going to slide this guy on and see how she looks. What you guys think? Too crazy? Or just like me? I like it. It's um, this line follows kind of this path here, center of the tire. So I think I'm gonna rock it like this. So the next step is we're gonna take this off and then make a copy of it on the uh, ACM, which is Alloplast or uh, Alumilite or plywood, whatever you wanna make this out of. All right guys, so today is a diffuser build day. As you can see, the diffuser is finalized, got the holes for the exhaust right there. And it's, uh, you know, the generic shape that I want. The other items, that we're also making are these strakes. These are like the fins. They're kind of just all over the place because it's pretty windy today. Now the tools we're gonna use, obviously the same thing we've used before. Rulers, a lot of them. And then over here, same as before, we got our, uh, these are the 17 to 24 TPI Bosch thin metal these are pretty damn good, actually. I love these things. These are the thin metal jigsaw blades. And then the jigsaw we're using, let's see that thing's just flopping around today. Skill saw, pretty good. I've used this forever. Never had complaints. Um, and then our sander, uh, doesn't want to come out today. Definitely need two hands for this shit, but there you go. Bam. So this is our orbital sander, and this is what makes the uh, the corners straight. You know, unless you're a very bad operator. And then over here we have, these are our sandpaper for the uh, sander. So this is a 220, that's kind of like the middle after this, this is the 80 grit, you see that? And then this is the fine, I think this is like 320, yeah, 320. So they kinda, kinda go in that order. 80, 220, and then 320. And I think they have finer ones too, but it's really not that necessary to do that. Next thing we're gonna do is bring the material out here, put it on the table, draw up the diffuser design on it, and then continue. We're only gonna use one of these edges. See what I mean? Because when I cut this, they're not gonna be even. Like, left and right side's not gonna be even, so we only use one side. And we'll just find the best side 
and kind of go from there. That way they're both the same, if you guys understand what I'm trying to say. So we're only gonna use this side. I'm gonna put copy because if I forget which side I used, I've already marked it down. All right, so next, this is where it gets slightly tricky. Now we're gonna line this up again. And then this time, we're gonna tape it. So this kind of goes back to my splitter how-to, remember that? Where we tape this down so it doesn't move. Go over here, we should be fairly okay. Actually, I'm a little short, see that? This is 60? Yeah, we are at 60. So this is why, this is prime example of why we need to go by measurements and not by actual pure template. Because you see this? I'm almost like a quarter inch shorter on this side, but I measured 60 across, which this template's 60 across, but you know, it's not absolute because this template's just paper. So, so we get it close and then we go by measurements so we know for sure that, you know, we're on there. So with this, good. Now we're just gonna follow this line very carefully. All right, so we could just cut this straight manually, all right? Straight as you can, and it's probably just fine. Another way to cut really long straights without screwing up is this. You can put down the, um, the flat edge of this as a guide, and then you just measure where you are on here. So it looks like from there to there, that's where that line's gonna be. And I'll show you guys this method just because some of you guys might be curious how it works. Or you could just cut straight, but this helps. I usually like to tape it down on both sides, like so. Or you could just cut straight the first time. But if you're not 100% sure that you can cut straight, this is a really good life hack. Tape. And this is why I bought a giant freaking roll of this tape. I got like five of these rolls. It's like $31 or something. It's pretty cheap. All right, so we tape these guys up. All right, we know we're solid. We're not going anywhere now. We'll just add another one over here, just for fun. We're not going nowhere. Even if this shifts, we should be okay. if you guys can see this but we're pretty much there see that so I should be able to run this whole thing and not worry about not being in line because see that it's resting on the side here so it's kind of like a guide let's run it and see what happens worst case scenario I just have to sand So 
the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna clean this up real quick. I mean, nothing crazy, because I still have the other pieces to cut, but I wanna clean it up just a little bit, because my OCD's kicking in and it's not letting me continue without doing this. So let's get this sanded down real quick and uh, let's see how it looks. I'm using that 80 grit by the way. The 80 grit's fairly rough and it just kind of flattens everything. And once we got it flattened out, then we could hit it with a 220 and then the rest. Yeah, looking pretty good. All right, so next thing, I should probably try to not make a mess here. We're gonna do the fins. Now, these are the uh, one of the bent fins, and there's two types. The crazy bent fin, which is this, and that guy. And then we have the semi-bent fin, these guys. And then this dude, which is the, um, the straight fins. I'm just gonna find the one that's straightest. And it might be this dude right here. You make templates, but you only use one, if it's the same thing, you know? You don't want to use two templates, because then you might have two different sizes. You trace one template, all right? And then you fully produce that template, or the piece. And after you produce that piece, then you use that first piece as the template for everything else, or for the rest of your uh, kit. All right, so we're just gonna lightly draw this. We're gonna follow this up with a ruler. But first things first, we line this up, and you'll see what I'm gonna do here in a minute. So once that's good, we take our ruler, all right, and we connect where we just stopped right here to here. That looks just about right. We'll connect these two. All right, and same with this side right here. I'm just gonna Keep this original line, but just make it so I can see it. All right. So now you see my, my sh oh shit. Um, now you see my line. I'm not sure if that's visible, but there's a curve right here. And what I did was I used a piece of, well, not a piece of tape, but a roll of tape. Roll of tape to make that that uh, radius. Now depending on how smooth you want that to be, you could make it as round as you want or you could make it as, I mean, you can make it as big as you want. I just want it like that. I don't want it too crazy because I don't want giant round pieces. It's round enough to where if I hit the ground, it won't catch and it'll just kind of slide all right so we got our first piece let's clamp this down and cut it and um, finish the whole thing then we can make our final pieces using the new template
now that we finalized our fin, this is it. I'm gonna make sure that it's the same size as what we measured it to be earlier. So yeah, we're about right there. 29 three quarters. So, if we put this on here, it should look pretty damn good. Yeah, there you go. So that's one. Now that we have our first piece, we could copy it on over to um, the other side of the, not the other side of the template, the, uh, we can make copies of it. There we go. We got our outside fin, middle fin. Actually, that's the outside fin. Those are the middle, and those are like the uh, second to the last. Got them done up. You see them, they're pretty similar. Not bad, huh? I mean, one day of cutting and another day of figuring out how to attach the hardware, but it's, it's very simple. And as you can see, you know, using the ruler as a guide really made the, uh, the cutting easier. Now, if you don't use the ruler as a guide, you could still cut this straight, but you know, you're gonna spend a lot of time on sanding and all that stuff. But it's not a problem. I mean, you could always just sand, but I say it's easier to cut it once and uh, do it right, and then just do minor sanding then spend days sanding. <laughs> All right, so final stage of the diffuser here. We've uh, finished sanding everything here. All the corners, all the surfaces went from 80 to 120, 220 to 320, and now it's looking pretty damn clean. All I gotta do is uh, get these guys out of the sun, because they're getting pretty damn hot. Just put them right there. Then the next thing we're gonna do is just finish off the main diffuser plate itself, which is right here. We've already hit it with the uh, 120 and 220. Next thing I'm gonna do is hit it with the uh, uh, 320, but this stuff gets pretty damn dusty. And the finer you go, the more fine the dust gets. And you wanna make sure you have nose and eyes because if you don't, you're gonna fuck yourself up. I don't know what this stuff is uh, made of, the, the black paint, but you probably don't wanna inhale that in very, very fine particles. As you can see them, they're right there, it's like powder. All right, let's finish this up. Then we can go to Home Depot, get some angles and um, go back to the garage tonight. I'm not sure if I could put this all together tonight, but at least we have everything ready to go. All right, let's do this. Sure if you guys could see this but those are the high spots see how they got brighter so we're basically evening it out right now nice and smooth and you can just run your fingers through this make sure that you don't have any more high spots then you could go with the uh, lighter grit Damn good. All right, we're gonna get in the trusty Teggy. Head down to Home Depot to get some aluminum angles. All that, all that noise that you're hearing is actually the Hotsport billet motor mounts. I don't have rubber mounts anymore because I hate the play. So I have these polyurethane. I think 
I forgot the durometer, I think it's like an 80 or something. It's it's pretty rough and you could feel everything. But the motor doesn't shake and when you hit the gas or the throttle, it responds like that. Anyways, we're gonna go to Home Depot, get some angles. Uh, I have enough I have enough hardware that I think we should be okay, but um, I should probably double check if I have enough rib nuts. And the process for cutting up the aluminum uh, angles, essentially the same as cutting the diffuser. We're gonna use a jigsaw and we're just gonna cut it uh, probably like inch at a time. You'll see what I mean when I'm when I'm doing it. It doesn't make any sense right now, but I'm gonna make one inch angle so I can attach the diffuser. Uh, and then the middle is gonna have longer straights. But I feel like on my Cayman, I overkilled the, the hardware and the mounting. I mean, it's stout, heavy duty, and you know, it'll last forever, but I think I could have done less and have the same um, kind of effect uh, because you know now it's super heavy so what I'm gonna do with the Miata is I'm gonna try to do the least amount of mounts but still keep it super rigid and uh, we'll see how that goes now random fact if you guys follow me on YouTube and you know you're wondering why I don't have a lot of videos coming out like every week I'm actually busy editing videos for you know other channels uh, specifically Toyo Tires, so I'm always out traveling, I'm, you know, shooting, producing videos, editing videos, shooting photos, editing photos, and, uh, you know, my, my channel is kind of like last priority, which is sad because I like my channel and, you know, I like posting videos of what I do every day, but if you follow me on Instagram, on my, I got few channels but the Miata channel is OMG Miata the Cayman is the Cayman gang and my main channel is Mas Kunana Bear I'll put it up right there and you guys could see my stories every day I mean I'm posting stories I actually posted the how to make the diffuser like live as I'm doing it on my Miata channel so if you're curious what I'm doing go to my Instagram, I'll probably have some sort of story. If not building stuff, it's gonna be car stuff while I'm traveling or stupid shit that, you know, I do with my roommates. <laughs> so, uh, make sure you follow us. And uh, you should follow Nana actually because she shoots pretty damn good photos. She doesn't post a lot, but I think, you know, she'll start posting more. And, uh, you know, we're just a bunch of car people in the same house. Yeah, we're just gonna get nine of these one inch uh, angles. And they look like they're 647 each versus these. These are kind of overkill, so I don't think I need that. Just gonna put that back. And um, we're gonna get this, and we should be good. So I came to Home Depot to buy a $10 freaking angle and left with a $220 bill. <laughs> I need this miter saw. That's what I always tell myself. I need it. <laughs> We're gonna make one inch brackets or angles. One inch should be substantial for what we need. So let's say one inch or two inch inches. Because one inch will hold Front, front, it might be too much flex. One and a half, maybe? One and a half, yeah, we could do one and a half. All right, so let's do one and a half. So let's do one and a half. Make a line right here. And that should be an inch and a half. And then, let's set it on here.
Six more. All right, so we've successfully made the freaking brackets, finally. Now there are two types of brackets here. These are the angled ones, as you see. That goes on the front. And these were the tricky ones that jacked me up yesterday. But now we are good. So now it's gonna be the painstaking task of measuring this from edge to edge. Actually, the, the quickest way to find our center here is actually pretty easy. We just draw an X from corner to corner. I'll show you right now. What the fuck is going on over there? Jesus Christ, like werewolves. All right, so just gonna draw an X right in the middle, tip to tip. Bam, and that's where we drill our hole. Easy peasy. We're just gonna have to do this about 39 times. And um, I'll get back to you guys. All right, so now that we have everything lined up, I got eight, uh, I got like 48 brackets or so. I don't know how many brackets I got. Good amount. So now we're gonna hit it with the uh, center punch. I think I had this in my episode three of my arrow build. So now we're just gonna punch the middle. Bam. That's it. Hope you guys can see that. Let's get the uh, GoPro closer. Bam. See that? Now we just gotta do that to all of those guys and then uh, we can drill. Now you wanna make sure that you get this pretty centered because if you don't, you're gonna have crooked ass holes. Now you're gonna spend a lot of time making these brackets. I'm probably two hours now into this. And uh, that's just part of the game, man. You don't wanna spend time making your diffuser and then half-ass on the bracketry. <laughs> right, what the hand? over there you need to peel this white paper off from the top yeah it's not gonna roll, is it? no okay you grab it grab the bottom I'm gonna go sideways. Okay, then flip your grip this way. Okay, we're gonna put it over the, do not drop it. Tension, give me some tension. Good. How much space do you have? Give it at least like two inches to overlap. Good. Put some tension. Okay, and put it down in each corner. Oh wait. <laughs> there. Move what? Just make sure the whole diffuser is covered. Okay, left to right, put tension down. Stick it down. Yeah, just put it down like this, like tension. Okay, and then get the uh, other corners, put some tension like this. Pull it, but not like 
retarded where you're gonna rip it. Just enough here. We'll do it at the same time. But grip it where I'm gripping. And pull. And then down. Then take these and same with this corner. Okay, pull. Okay. And then seal it. This is okay? Yeah. yeah, if you see slack, just pull it. That way it makes it easier to squeegee this down once everything's good. You want to seal it so you don't get dust inside. Okay. Now that that's done, we're gonna grab Plexus or any wax. Then we're gonna work our way out. We're gonna use Plexus so we don't scrape the uh, wrap. Go. I just wipe it down, make sure it's all pressed down, heat it, and then cut the vinyl. Now we do the other side. Definitely a lot easier when you have help doing the uh, the uh, peeling. Welcome to the other side of the house. <laughs> so much crap on the ground, but the diffuser is done, my friends. Everything is wrapped. It took me about three hours to do everything because I'm kind of anal about dust and stuff. So I got everything wrapped inside and out. And uh, the last thing I need to do is punch out the holes. I actually have mounting holes here for the brackets. You can't see it now because I didn't punch it out yet. So that itself is gonna take like an hour to punch out all the holes. And then I'm gonna put it all together and probably even have it mounted tonight. All the bolts installed, gurney flaps even installed, side extensions on, and it's fully wrapped. So freaking pretty. Look at that. Woo! Flawless. Now I can't install this today or tonight because I don't have enough time and uh, it's pretty late. So we're gonna install this sometime this week, I promise. You'll see the, uh, the green flap on there. So clean. So, we're finally here. Home stretch of the diffuser install. The diffuser brackets are in. And, uh, well, they're, they're coated the same color as the wrap that I'm using for the diffuser. And you can kind of see um, that same color with my Cayman over there. I'm using this light stick right now to light everything because GoPros hate uh, dark scenes. Anyways, these guys are gonna go right over here. I'm not sure if you see that, but that frame rail right there, I'm gonna actually drill and nutsert this area. Um, same, same nutserts I used for the body kit. And as you can see, this portion of the bodywork we cut that uh, previously to accommodate for um, the diffuser. And I don't know why I have spiders up in here. I already sprayed this whole place down with 
um, insect repellent, but those fuckers are resilient. And right here you can see I use the water drain hole as a pathway for my charger. That's my battery charger because I don't drive these things too often. Um, not because I don't want to, it's just I don't have time, I'm always traveling. So this guy, let's see if I can kind of mock it up right now. He's gonna go like so. That makes any sense. But this one's supposed to be facing the other way. So let's do that and then uh, continue. And I kind of sprayed this down with a little bit of WD-40 because, ooh, this thing bites. Bam, see that? So we got a, one spot right there. I'm not sure if you guys could see that clearly, but it's, uh, it's on there. So once we set this rib nut on, we can just expand it in there. Then now we have this guy and we don't need a nut on the other side. Easy peasy. Now the only problem is I I didn't take this into account, this little area. So I might just put a washer back there and then expand the rib nut. I think that should, that should work. So we'll see how that goes. We'll do the rest here and uh, continue. I need to reapply a little bit of W40 on this guy or a lot. Okay, trying to avoid fucking up my only step drill here. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this rib nut tool, insert this, and then clamp it down. I'll try to see if I can get it with my GoPro on my head, if not. Sorry. All right, here we go. First dude right here. Oh, God. Ooh. Okay. Twist this in. Make sure it's actually good. Damn, that's hard. See, the problem with these things is um, the uh, replacement, man. It's sketchy. All right, there you go. You see that? It's on there. You don't want to over tighten this stuff because you could pull it out or pull it it meaning the threads of this thing. You could literally pull it out. Let's see if you'd like where they are. And then we'll measure the rest. That's one. And then we'll do the one right here at the end. Try to align these as much as I could, but yeah, it's, it's kind of hard without having a template. So we'll play with it. I mean, worst case scenario, make these holes slightly bigger. There you go. So everything's installed. We still have one to go right here. I still gotta kind of jerry and figure out how to do that, but everything's on. Freaking solid, it's not going anywhere. So we're gonna do the other side and then uh, mock up the diffuser and see how it looks. These are billet washers. Damn. Take seven per side. There it is, everything's done. 
diffuser is on. It looks way bigger with a wide angle lens, but it is big. But I think with everything installed, this is gonna even out nice. <laughs> oh my God, it's insane. Look at this thing.